because I'll be 50 in about two months. Exactly two months from today. May 10th, I'll be 50. Um, And when I was young, when I was 20-year-old John in college, I was so excited to follow Jesus, and I was so enthusiastic about it. I had big dreams of ministry and big dreams of service to Jesus. But now, 30 years later, I know it's not going to be nearly as easy as I thought it would be. And if present me could go back to 20-year-old past me, I would put my, my hand on my shoulder and I would say, John, it's going to be a whole lot harder than you think. It's not going to be as fun or as easy as you think. Those big dreams, I'm glad you have them, John. But just know, some of them aren't going to come true. Some of them are going to be dashed against the rocks of hardship. It's not going to be as easy as you think. And if you're, if you're in the room, you're 20, 21, 22, please hear my heart in that. If you want to be faithful to Jesus, it's going to take more courage, more guts, than you probably realize right now. But it's worth it. It's worth it. So don't give up. Don't quit. Run the race with endurance. When life is hard and you're disappointed and you feel like giving up, don't quit. Run the race with endurance. What do you need at this stage in your life? What do you need to lay aside to be prepared to actually say, I'm going to make it to the finish line, even if I get there limping across. Now, where do you get the motivation to do that? Because that's, that's a hard message to tell past me. It's maybe a hard message to tell present 20, 21, 22-year-old you. Where do you get the motivation to, to hang in there when you feel like, man, this is not working out the way I thought. Man, life didn't turn out the way I wish it would. I thought by this time in my life I would be at a different stage. I thought my kids would. I thought my grandkids would. Where do you get the motivation to hang in there when life is hard and disappointing and you experience the ego nah of following Jesus? Where do you get the motivation to do that? Let me show you. Hebrews 12 3 says, consider him. Consider him. Fill your mind with him. Focus your attention on him. Who's him? It's Jesus. Consider him who has endured such hostility by sinners against himself so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Where do you get the motivation? By considering him. By focusing your attention on him so that you will not grow weary. And lose heart. Or again, verse 2 puts it this way fixing our eyes on Jesus, setting the focus of our gaze on Jesus, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Where do you get the motivation? You get the motivation by fixing your gaze on Jesus. So there's Jesus being rejected by the very people who should have been most ready to welcome him. There's Jesus being stabbed in the back by some of his closest friends. There's Jesus enduring abuse of an illegal, unjust trial on trumped up charges. There's Jesus being whipped and beaten, bloody and broken. There's Jesus with nails being driven through his wrists and his feet for you and for me because he literally loved you to death. Fix your eyes on Jesus so that you will not grow weary and lose heart.